Well, folks, as you can see, we are in the garage again today. But today, we are doing a little less garage stuff, a little less gym, a little more grill stuff. That's right, it's a Traeger day, folks. It's always a good day when you get a delivery from the good folks at Traeger. Now, the Flat Rock, if you guys haven't heard, pretty exciting stuff. It's a little less pellet, a little less grill, a little more propane, a little more griddle. That's right, the folks at Traeger came out with the griddle. Get the f out of here, this is gonna be awesome. All right, folks, you heard correctly, Traeger is now in the griddle game. Well, they're calling it a flat top grill, flat top grill, griddle, whatever. It's a big flat metal surface for you to cook all kinds of awesome food on. Breakfast and smash burgers and all the stuff that you can't cook on a grill because it falls through. You could do fried rice, do a little hibachi situation out there. I love a flat top griddle. And being able to cook outside is one of my favorite things. So if I could have as many different ways to cook outside as I possibly can, I'm really pumped about it. And from what I read in the pre-release literature that Traeger sent me on this bad boy, let's just say I'm excited. Now, before we get going for full disclosure, Traeger did send me this unit free for review. So I always like to disclose any kind of relationship I have with companies, but as always, I will keep my opinions as unbiased as possible. I will tell you if something sucks, guarantee if something sucks, I'm gonna tell you, but I've, I've never had anything from Traeger suck yet, so we'll see. But let's get into this bad boy, get it unboxed and see what she looks like. First, before we even get into that, essential flat top grill kit. Looks like we got a couple spatulas. You can get on there and ching, 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 you know, do the whole, I'm gonna do the like twirl in the egg. Actually, I'm not gonna do that. I would make a huge fucking mess. Looks like a scraper, some spatulas, some bottles for some oils and stuff. So you kind of need that with a flat top, honestly. And a grill cover. You always need a grill cover. In Florida, especially, I always tell uh, people that I work with, if you want to torture test a product, send it to me because shit outdoors in Florida just rusts and falls apart in no time. I don't know if it's the salty air or how humid it is all the time or what, but Florida has a way of tearing shit up. Even if something's on my covered back porch, I still put a cover on it. So cover, pretty awesome. Let's crack into this bad boy. See how long it's gonna take to put this together. Oh, by the way, today, Civivi Chevalier, I think it's called. I actually had this in my Christmas gift guide and I've been carrying it ever since. This is like under a hundred dollar knife, but man, this thing is an everyday banger. And then you don't feel bad about tearing it up a little bit because it's like less than hundred bucks. Really good knife. Check one out. Start here. One thing I'll say about Traeger, and I've said it in other reviews that I've done, they get the packaging and the unboxing experience spot on. It's right on top, says start here, easy to find. Nice pictures, nicely printed. I mean, look, at the end of the day, is this the most important thing? No, how the damn thing cooks is the most important. But, you know, I've said it before, it's the little touches, they, they matter, they matter. And as always, the beer guide. <laughs> it's one of my favorite things about their instruction manuals. It tells you how many beers each step should be. I don't know why, I just love that. I think it's the greatest, whoever, Trigger, whoever at your company decided that you should do that, they need to, they need to raise. They're a genius. Also, I don't know if you can see, but the printing, and I've talked about it before, Trigger goes as far as to print like little playhouses on the inside of their boxes so you can cut them out and assemble them for your kids. My kids are getting a little old to where they're not gonna do that, so I don't do it, but just another example attention to detail. Well, here I am again, finding myself in a situation where an instruction manual says it's a two-person job to do a step, and I never had two people here. So, I guess we'll figure that shit out. If you guys have watched any of this, usually it's two-person is for bitch mode. So, just saying. I mean, for legal purposes, if it says two people, use two people, but for sure one person should be able to do that. If you're 
over the age of 10. Now that part's heavy. <laughs> now here is the, here's the dude. This is the, the actual, shit. Yeah. The actual dude here. Now this part is heavy. I mean, obviously easy enough for one person, but this is the actual griddle top. It's heavy. Seems to be nice and thick. You didn't think we were gonna have garage time without an appearance of the old torch, did you? Not likely. Caster set. Let's roll. This is one of the reasons why I think I might like this one better than my existing built-in that I have out in my outdoor kitchen. The ability to move it around. Sorry, you can hear the fan, but like I complain all the time, it's Florida here. It's hot, so yeah. We're in another team lift portion of the build. This is a reoccurring theme. I'm by myself, we're gonna do it, don't be a bitch. But for legal reasons, don't do what I do, follow the instructions. Eh, you can maybe use two people, but honestly, if you've put together any of their other grills, this is not near as big or heavy, so. put together and she looks nice all right folks let's take a quick break from the build and talk about one of my other favorite things that happens to go fantastic with cooking outdoors and that's whiskey now you guys know i love the whiskey and for me spending the day outside grilling or smoking a good cut of meat and sipping on some whiskey it just doesn't get much better than that and the sponsor of today's video, Still Austin, has some tasty whiskey to fit that bill. Still Austin is a grain-to-glass distillery based in, yep, you guessed it, Austin, Texas. Glass-to-grain means they are involved in every part of the whiskey-making process. They use 100% Texas-grown corn, rye, and barley, all sourced from local farmers. And because they love this blue marble we all live on, they put a lot of focus into sustainability and having a small carbon footprint. They source everything locally, use heritage grain, and then return the spent grains to local farmers to feed their animals. Their distillery is also designed to be energy efficient and save on water because making that lovely brown water of the gods takes, well, a lot of water. Still Austin has a nice, smooth, sweet, 98 proof straight bourbon called The Musician. This guy right here. It's got a good bit of rye in the mash bill though, so it has a nice bit of spice to it. They have a rye called The Artist. My personal favorite though is this guy right here, the cast drink version, coming in at 118 proof because, well, I'm a bit of a proof hound. Still has that nice rye kick to it because of the mash bill, but the density of sweet fruitiness is bumped way up because of that higher proof. It's a really nice pour. That is right in my wheelhouse of proofs. Around the 115 mark, I'm, I'm a big fan of those proofs. It's got enough density of flavor to let you know, really taste everything in it, but it's not so hot that it burns your mouth off. Really nice, sweet, complex. It's a damn good pour. So definitely go check the good folks at Still Austin out and a big thanks to them for sponsoring this video. Now, back to finishing up this grill build so we can do the other thing they tend to do great in Texas, cooking outdoors. Didn't take me that long. I'd say maybe, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour, maybe a little longer, but I'm also recording while I'm doing this, which kind of screws things up. If I was only doing this, it probably would have been quicker. There's pretty, pretty cut and dry stuff. Now, I told you guys I would be honest if I ran into anything. So I've got a small ding on the trigger. The grill itself seems so far great. So it's, it's not, it's kind of small because it's not really a ding on the grill itself. I've always complimented Traeger on the tools they include. And still, this screwdriver, as far as like included screwdrivers, fantastic. But Traeger, what the hell is this? <laughs> this thing couldn't screw a $2 hooker with a fistful of 20s. It is the most, I mean, hold on, wait, ready? <laughs> what the fuck? When you're putting this thing together, do yourself a favor and get yourself a normal 3 8 wrench and not something that's thinner than public school toilet paper. I mean, <laughs> this thing is useless as tits on a board. Jesus Christ. I gotta give my people a trigger a little bit of a hard time about that. Y'all know I love you, but what the hell is that? 
Anyway, this thing seems awesome. Let's get it out back because we got instructions. We got to season the cooktop real good before we could use it. And I'm excited to get this thing going. So let's get this thing out back and get to season. got her all seasoned up. The seasoning process on this is the same as it is on any cast iron or carbon steel cooking apparatus, cooking surface, cooking, you know what the hell I'm trying to say. Put a little oil on there, wipe it around with a rag, get all the excess off so you just have a super thin coat of oil, high temperature, let it burn off when it quits smoking, rinse and repeat. The instruction manual from Traeger says to do this four times. I would say do it a minimum of four times. I did it about six or eight. I was sitting out here tending my smoker, got a brisket on, and I think I put about eight coats on there. About an hour, hour and a half or so. I don't remember exactly how long, but I season the shit out of all my cast iron and carbon steel stuff. The better you season it, the better it's gonna hold up. You don't want it to rust. It's gonna be more nonstick, and it's just gonna make a much better cooking experience because nothing's worse than putting something on something. It's not seasoned good enough, and then the shit sticks. Nightmare fuel. Spend the time seizing it properly and you'll have a much better result. After you finish seizing it, turn that baby off, let it rest till it gets back down to room temperature. Then you can fire it back up into your first cook. As far as oil, you can use basically anything. I've heard some people swear by certain types of oil. I think the Traeger manual said canola, I think, if I'm remembering correctly. I used avocado. I've used avocado in the past. It works really well. I've heard some people swear up and down by grapeseed oil and all different kinds of oil. Uh, some people really like using tallow, like a beef tallow or something. But point is, get some oil on that shit, smoke it off, multiple coats, Bob's your uncle. Now, as for some of the specifics on this guy, we'll touch lightly on some stuff. I don't wanna to go too deep into it. I haven't had a lot of time with this thing. After I've had it for a good month or so, and I've really put a bunch of cooks on it and stuff, we'll do maybe a, a full in-depth review. It is 36 inches high, 27 inches deep, 74 inches wide with the shelves out. It does have three U-shaped burners, which they claim the U-shaped burners are much better than the straight burners that are in some of these type flat tops. It's supposed to make for a much more even temperature. It has a re recessed carbon steel cooktop. The nice thing about the cooktop on that thing is not only does it pull out, it's got what they call flame lock construction, which is because that cooktop is recessed and it's covered all the way around only with some vents in the back, the burners are completely protected from wind. So it's gonna help your temperature be more stable on windy days and it's gonna keep you from getting like burner blowouts. The cooking surface is 594 square inches, which I actually measured it, it's 18 by 33. Plenty of room. I mean, you could cook a bunch of stuff on there. I imagine at least a couple pounds of bacon at once, all the pancakes you could possibly imagine. Plenty of cook space. And it's saying the max temperature is 600 degrees. That is hot as shit. 600 degrees is scorching, buddy. You need it hotter than 600 degrees, I, I don't know what to tell you. You're gonna burn the shit out of it, it's hotter than 600 degrees. It does include the same PAL, the pop and lock rail systems around the side that is kind of the ecosystem they've been using on the new Timberline XL. The new Ironwood has the pop and lock too, which is great because then all the different attachments that go with that ecosystem, the little hooks, the caddies for organization, all that stuff can all snap on and off that thing super easy and help you have additional space when you're at your, your grilling battle station. It also brought over the same easy clean keg design that they are putting on their newer smokers, which is that cup down there at the bottom. And I have to say, I think this is one of the things that's gonna make this my new favorite flat top over my more expensive built-in. You scrape everything down in the hole, that little keg comes out, it's got the aluminum cup in there, you dump that, put a new one in, done. It does have electric ignition. Because of that cooktop being dropped down in there, you can't really see the flames. So it does have a little light over each burner that lights up and shows you that the burner is lit. They've also incorporated a really nice tank sensor, which is cool. When you put a new tank on there, you calibrate it, and then it's gonna let you know as your tank's going down so you never run out of gas. Because I know we've all been there. You've been there right in the middle of a cook and flame out you're done and then you're screwed this way that never happens you can always see the level of your tank which i think is a cool addition it has two 17 inch huge folding shelves which i really really like when i'm cooking i need a lot of workspace you've got food condiments sides spatulas all kinds of stuff those guys are 
big. Big, nice, big side shelves, and they do fold down for storage. It's nice that those things can quickly fold down, put your cover on it, and you can put it off in the corner and not take up so much space when you're not using it. It also has a nice lid, which is good for keeping the elements out, keeping dust and stuff, and it is on hinges, so it's not something you have to take on and off. It also secondarily kind of creates a grease buffer, so when grease is popping, it's not going all over your porch or whatnot, and then easily close that thing down, you're not using it for storage. So I really dig the lid. I'm thinking I might end up switching out my built-in flat top and maybe getting some gas burners out here in my outdoor kitchen, and this might be my new flat top. From what I'm seeing so far, I think it's gonna be easier to cook on, easier to clean, and I think I'm really gonna dig it. We'll see. Before we sign off, let me cook a couple quick things on this throughout the day, and we'll hop back on, give you my first impressions of how she cooked, the maiden voyage, so to speak. Let's cook some shit real quick. again. Man, it is windy today. Hopefully the uh, little, my poof on my mic is keeping all this wind noise down. We'll see. We get to post and everything's like. Poof. All right, so we got a few cooks in and I have to say I'm a fan. I know you guys, I know. Chill, yeah, whatever. I'm telling you, the thing cooks like a dream. I, I really, I did some eggs on it. Eggs are always kind of my test with something like that to see because eggs are super delicate and, and they like to stick on you. The eggs pulled right off there, no issue whatsoever. I did some hash browns, browned them up nice, no potato stickage, nothing stuck. We did some quesadillas with my family, a little bit of steak, a little bit of onions and bell peppers, some tortillas and stuff, all that was perfect. That thing, if you season it right, shit does not stick. Sausage was sliding around like hockey pucks. I could tap it, it would just slide across the work surface. If you spend the time and season it properly, that is a great cooking service as far as nonstick. Really, really good. And I got great crust on everything. The sausage was nice and brown. The quesadillas were getting nice and crunchy. It was one of those things where I had some of the cheddar cheese fall out of the quesadillas and it fried up a little bit and that peeled right off and flipped. Really happy with what I've cooked on it so far. I'm gonna do some smash burgers next. I can't wait to try those. I think they're gonna be delicious. I didn't notice any hot spots while I was cooking. It seemed to be pretty even. If I do a full in-depth review on it, I'll get out my laser gun and maybe get some readings across the, uh, the cooktop to see if it's really good and even. Part of this design Traeger has in this one is not only does it have three different burners, but they have these kind of baffles in between the burners. They claim gives you three distinct working zones or cooking zones so you can have three very different temperatures. So I'm going to spend a little time testing out, see how accurate that is. As I thought, cleanup, again, part of the cleanup has to do with how well you season it. If you don't season it right, shit sticks. That's going to be a nightmare. But if you season it properly, cleanup is a dream. You just scrape everything and put it in the hole. Really? Nothing. Okay. I'm going to try to reword that. You scrape everything off and put it down the chute. <laughs> and it goes right down into the keg at the bottom and you dump it. Easiest cleanup of any flat top I've personally used. It's way easier than my built-in. No complaints so far. But like I said, I have not had a chance to use it for very long, so we'll see how it goes after she's got some miles on her. All right, guys, well that wraps this part up. One more thing before we go though, we do have to do the giveaway drawing from last week's video and then do another giveaway for this video because. Lately, I've just been doing the giveaways like crazy, giving back to the people. All right, folks, let's close this bad boy out. We got to draw a winner from last week's giveaway, and then we got to do this week. So let's do the drawing first, get our good old random comment picker, and go. The winner is... Heath Mullins. Congratulations, my brother. Heath commented, I'm looking to get a workout system. I was looking at the Rogue, but curious about the rep system you got. Hashtag open sea leather. Hashtag leather is better. Well, Heath, my brother, Rogue is great, but it's expensive. I would say the, the rep system is 
par with the quality. It's really great. I've really loved it, but you can get it for a little bit of price. But that's not to discourage you from buying Rogue. It's all American. It's good stuff. So tough pick. Look at some reviews online. Lots of great stuff out there on those two. But Heath, you have a new Open Sea Mini Hobe or Mini 5050 coming your way. I will be contacting you down in the comments and telling you to email us so we can get your deets. All right, for this week's giveaway, what can we do? Let's do, we haven't done any of my merch lately. Let's do one of these glass trays. We call it a glass tray because it's made of solid glass and it's an ashtray, glass tray. See, see how clever we are there? <laughs> we'll give away one of these glass trays for next week's giveaway. Rules for the giveaway are as always, you gotta be a subscriber to the channel, you gotta smash that like button, and then comment down below. This week's hashtags will do hashtag glass tray because that's what we're giving away. Hashtag Traegerhood. Yeah, I know that's going to kill some of you guys that are out there, you rec tech guys, but we're doing a Traeger video, so hashtag Traegerhood. Get you some. <laughs> so do all that stuff, and we will draw a winner live in the next upload. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one, got some good information, and maybe even found it a tad entertaining. If you did, feel free to smash that like button. That always helps us out. If you're not a subscriber, please consider doing so. We'd love to have you on board. Hope everyone is having a fantastic week. And we'll see you in the next video. This is kind of our peak outdoor grilling season here in Florida. Because we've got like now through like May or June. And then it's real miserable hot outside. I still do it. I still grill. I've said before, I grill almost 12 months a year. But it's not near as pleasant when it's 80,000 degrees outside. It's, it's a little rough. Your boy endures though.